Hey, good morning, girls. Sorry for the delay here. Uh, apparently, I let the phone run down to where there was no battery. Uh, and then I went to bring Facebook up, and it only showed half a frame. So, don't know what's going on with technology, but it's all good, right? So, today, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are on day 38 of our summer challenge. I am excited, ladies. We are a week and a half away from completing the challenge. So you've done fabulous. This is exciting. And I want to hear from you. I want you to share down below what has God been showing you through this challenge. You guys have been looking at verses for 38 days now. Decide, writing them down, picking out keywords, defining those keywords, and then asking God how they apply to your life. What is God showing you? I know he's shown you something over the past 38 days, but we have a week and a half left. So what I want to know from you is what topic would you like to have next week? I'm going to give the final week open for you to pick a topic. I picked our topics this week as God has led and really felt that they were important for the time that he had, you know, he's like, now is when this needs to be addressed. And so we address it. So, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up next week. I want a topic. I want to pick it from something that all of you guys are struggling in. But I need to know from you. So share down below. Think about it this week. And share it with me so that I can start preparing and see which topic God wants to bring forward. So I'm excited about that as we wrap up the challenge. So today, oh girls... I just love our topic. It's challenging, but it's also very um, freeing. The chains of bondage are being released on our priorities and our craziness in life if we're pressing in. So who sets your priorities every day? Most of us say our kids, our job, whatever I think I have to get done, but the answer is really is person that should be setting our priorities is God. They have to be focused around Him. He has to be first. We have a loving and kind God, but He's also a jealous God. He wants you to put Him first. And it's amazing when you do. That's what the sad part is, is that so many of us are missing out on opportunities, on blessings, because we're so busy being busy with things that are not a true priority. See, whatever you make the priority will be the priority. So if I say my priority goes into, you know, A, B, C, D, and it's all leading straight to everything that's got to be done over here, then that becomes my priority. Now, in my priority list starts with my time with God in the morning, worship, reading, prayer, fellowship, whatever it is, all pointing to God. And that's my priority, and then the rest of the day follows. That becomes my priority. And what I will tell you girls, is I know I say, start with five minutes in the morning, making that your priority with God. And what happens, girls, is that after a couple days, you become hungry for more. And you're going to find yourself making more time for God. There's something about Him. It's kind of like, you know, okay, if you like a hot fudge sundae, I like a good hot fudge sundae, right? Nice and hot and gooey, really delicious ice cream underneath. You bite into it and it's like, oh my goodness, right? It's good. Because, see, if you have a really good hot fudge sundae and you take a bite out of it, you're not going to take just one quick bite. You are going to devour that whole thing. That's what God does. The more time we spend with Him, the more time we want. Once we are focused on the things of God and, and the things that He finds important, our day is amazing. More gets done. We aren't as overwhelmed. We aren't as stressed. We aren't as tired. 
Because see, what happens, girls, is when we set our priorities according to what we want, our will, we become exhausted because we're doing it on our own. When our priorities become about God's will, we're refreshed because He's taken that burden. So it's just, the key is, we've got to determine how and what is best for our priorities. Setting priorities is not easy. I'm not going to sit here and say that my list of priorities, my to-do list, you know, my great little checklist to do list here is easy to put together. I know what has to be done in my day. But I also know there are key components to my day that have to happen. Number one is that time with God. Number two, I've got to be drinking my water. Number three, I have to eat food. Okay, I'm really bad. Morning time, I can have a cup of coffee, and I think that's food. I have a very warped mind. It's just, I've had breakfast, I've had a cup of coffee, I'm good to go. There's got to be some form of protein in that, right? But it's not. So see, we have to set these priorities. We have to know that time with God is more important than, you know, I don't even know. It's more important than anything you could do. So, what we know for a fact, ladies, is we tend to cut back on the things that should be priority in order to achieve the goals, right? So we tend to cut back on the fellowship with other believers, or we pass on the quiet time with God to make sure that our priority list gets done. We cut out that rich fellowship and that precious time with God all in the sake of busyness. We're too busy to connect. We're too busy to be consistent in the Word or showing up for stuff. There's always an excuse to why we can't do something for God. Whether it's attending a Bible study or whether it's reading the Word or whether it's connecting with other people. I've been having a great conversation with a friend of mine, it's, she's a pastor's wife, and we're talking about the fact that we've lost that connection with people because of social media. We don't meet with people. We don't call people no more. We chat. We text. But we've lost that fine art of connecting with people. It's time that we put our priorities in line, especially as the school year starts. For those of you that are parents, your kids are going back to school. It's going to get crazy. But the kids don't have to do everything. Trust me. You need to be setting that example for your children and pointing that God is first. See, that's part of what's wrong in our world. We've all become so busy being busy, that the kids that have grown up and this generation out there that's walking around with their hands out entitled, they feel like everybody should pay for their education, pay for everything for them, just hand it to them. It's because we've lost that touch with these people, with your children. How much more are the people around you? How many friends do you have that you've not spoken to Face to face. There's something about a face to face. That's part of the reason why I do the morning minutes as video. Oh, Lordy, I don't want to sit there and see myself on video. But there's a connection there. I would much rather meet with each of you girls in a group and hang out and fellowship and build you up that way. But some of you are on the West Coast, some of you are out of the country. So it's a little bit hard for us to do it. But look locally. Those are the connections you need to make. But we've got to set our priorities right. God has to be first. And yes, this is our theme for this week. But it's really critical. As we're talking about school starting. For our school start in August. 
Then, what about the holidays? Ladies, we're heading into August, which means we have Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's all popping right up there. That is crazy time for some people. But it's crazy time for people because they allow it to be a crazy time. See, we're not crazy here because we set some boundaries. We set our priorities. And yeah, sometimes I miss on the priorities. But I try to return back to what is important, what the essentials are. And that's the key, girls. Setting your priorities is not easy. Just like relationships aren't easy. Releasing weight is not easy. Running a business is not easy. Raising children is not easy. Being married sometimes is not easy. But it's so worth it. Once we can understand how to put our priorities in place to focus on the will of God. Ask yourself, write down your list. What is your list for today? And then ask yourself, what in that list points you to God? And the sad part is most of you, you aren't pointed to God throughout your day. And I used to be like that too. I used to get up and hit the ground running. And then wonder, why did I run out of energy? Why did I run out of gas around 2 or 3 o'clock? It's because I did not bring in the living word into my life as the first part of my day. When I bring that in and bring Jesus into the beginning of my day, even five minutes in the beginning, now it grows more. Now I also add it throughout the day if I need to. Because there's times that I need to just pull back from what's going on and spend time at the Father's feet. It's like Martha and Mary. Martha complaining. Mary is sitting there and being lazy. And Jesus said, Mary has chosen the good thing. Ladies, choose the good thing. Find your way in putting God's first. Start your day with Him. Make sure you're in fellowship. Plug into a Bible study and be consistent. Don't go when it's convenient. Don't open your Bible when it's convenient. Don't worship God when it's convenient. Don't pray to God when it's convenient or you're in an emergency. We should be doing that all the time. challenging one today, but it's exciting to know that it's not easy to set up our priorities. We all understand that, and we all agree, but we cannot cut back from the things of God to achieve the list. Okay, your verse for today. Ready? Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. It's two verses. It's fairly short. You guys got this. Colossians 3, 1 to 2. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above and not, are th not on things that are of the earth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Or on the earth. Sorry. Write your verse down. Pick out your keywords. Define them in either Strong's or Blue Letter Bible. Dot org, and then ask God, what is he showing you today in this? What today is God showing you? Have you been compromising your fellowship with him, your rich fellowship with him and other believers to accomplish your business? And that's busyness, not business. Are you cutting back on the things that are essential in your life? To satisfy the busyness. To satisfy keeping up with everyone else. I have a friend who her son was involved in every sport. Doing everything possible. And she was so overwhelmed. By mid-year with her, her life she was 
exhausted and just couldn't do it. She was depressed. And when we chatted, and we're cross country, but we chatted, right? And I'm like, what's going on in your life? Why are you struggling so much? And she says, well, you know my son, and I'm not going to name names just in case she pops on. I don't want to pick her out. She says, well, he's involved in all of these sports, one after another through the year. Then he's got to go to this camp and that camp and do this and do that. And I just, I'm tired. And I reminded her that when we grew up, we did not do every single thing. We picked out those key things in our life that were important. Those things we really, really wanted to do. And that's what we did. And I asked her, why are you saying yes to every single thing this, this boy asks? And she says to me, because I don't want him mad at me. And what they're teaching in the schools is that if your parents tell you no, then your parents just don't love you. What a misconception these children are being taught. And so she's running herself ragged. He's being spoiled rotten so that when he graduates, he goes out saying, well, I'm entitled and I get it all. Ladies, priorities, teach them to your children. Apply them to your life. Trust me, your days, your life will be so much more pleasant. Because how could it not be pleasant when you're glorifying God and God is first? How could you not be blessed that way? So I know this is a challenge for some, because some of you are involved in every single thing you can think of. But it's seriously time, girls, to step back and ask God, where do you want me? How do you want me involved? You need to step back and ask God, how do you restore that fellowship with Him and spend that time with Him? How do you be consistent in your studies you're involved in? See, and I was convicted on that. I allowed the busyness of my business to cause me to miss some studies. And I got totally convicted when I had people giving me excuses for stuff. And I was like, seriously? Why are you not plugging in? And God said to me, Robin, listen to yourself. Seriously, you didn't go either. And I had to step back and ask for forgiveness because he was right. I allowed some outside circumstances to control my priorities. And we changed it. The key is, we all have been there, ladies. But your key is, are you willing to change it to honor God with your to-do list? Heavenly Father, I just lift these girls up to you, Lord, and I know priorities are a struggle in our life. I know, Lord, that we have such a hard time saying no to things that we feel we need to be everywhere doing everything. <clears throat> Lord, we feel that We've got to be Wonder Woman, slapping on those bracelets, putting on our headband and running when we forget that what we need to do is pause with you. I pray, Lord, today that you'll start gently revealing to these women how they can start bringing you into that key point, that key place, that top spot in their to-do list. And may they be totally blessed as they surrender to you. If they make the main thing the main thing. Father, and just open up those opportunities. Give them peace. Refresh them. Restore them. As they submit to you. And place you at the top. In Jesus' name. Alright girls. Tough topic again. This is Priorities is probably the worst topic. To bring to you. Because I know many of you. I've had people tell me. Well, you don't know my life. You don't get it. And, and it's not about that, girls. You are the only one. You and God are the only one that knows what's on your list. Put God first. Be consistent. 
don't sacrifice the rich fellowship with him and with other believers over things. Nothing can replace that rich fellowship. All right, Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. Again, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Write it down, keywords, define them, and then write down what God's showing you. And do share. Again, remember, I'm looking for suggestions for your topics for next week, or topic, and then we'll take all your, your, your um, all of what you're saying, we'll take it before God and see where he wants me to go. But we are on the last week and a half of Summer Challenge. Keep it up, girls. You're doing awesome. High five to you. Whoops, where's the camera? High five. Smack myself in the head. And have a fabulous day. We will catch you tomorrow. So enjoy. Breathe. And get your priorities right. All right? Love you, girls. Bye.